Welcome back, everyone. This is Bourbon Judge. Happy Sunday. Happy end of week. Um, so we're going to go ahead and change up a little bit today, right? Just a little bit. Um, so typically, we review a lot of different bourbons and ryes and whiskeys and so forth. And, you know, a lot of times it's, you know, big distilleries, right? Buffalo Trace, uh, 1792, Heaven Hill. Um, but I wanted to kind of change it up because a lot of times we, we review bourbons that are made by MGP, right? So when you think of MGP, you think of obviously uh, Indiana-based company, right? Huge, huge uh, distillery. They make bourbon, whiskeys, rye, uh, gin, and I think vodka as well, right? And they make, they make, they're a mass producer. When I say they are big, they are big, right? So um, MGP, based out of Indiana, they make a lot of different bourbon and rye for other companies who are either new to the market and or just, you know, just need support in terms of making their whiskeys as they're probably starting out as a company, as a distillery, and trying to, you know, obviously age their bourbon and their rise and so forth. So when you think of MGP products, who are some of the other companies that they make bourbon for? So, one of my favorites here in uh, the Maryland area, Sagamore, Sagamore Spirits. High West Distillery, actually, like which is Midwinter's Nice Dram, and then they also have like the Yippie Kaye and a few others. They actually do make their own, but they do get a lot of their rise actually from MGP. Um, so that's just a little call out. And then another big boy, Bell Mead, right? Bell Mead down in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, which is actually technically um, Nelson Greenbrier Distillery. So, you know, again, they make a lot of different bourbon and rise for other companies. And you might be asking yourself, well, why would they do that? Why wouldn't just the distillery just make their own stuff, right? So when you think about when you're, you you have that grand idea, hey, I want to start uh, my own distillery, my own bourbon, my own rye, it takes a lot of things. It takes money, it takes time, resources. Uh, you have to get a building. You have to age your whiskey. And what are you doing when you know? Because we all know bourbon is not good unless it's aged at least four or five years. So what are you doing those first four or five years, right? While all this lovely bourbon and rye is just aging. What are you doing? You're not getting any money from it, right? Because it's just sitting in, in the barrels. So what do you do? Typically a company like, for example, Sagamore will say, hey, MGP, this is what I would like. Make something that tastes very similar to this. And then from there, from that point, obviously it's a very collaborative effort, but a lot of time and effort goes into it. So MGP mass produces for a Sagamore in this instance. And then from there, um, while they're waiting for all their bourbon and rye to age, um, they're able to sell the juice that is made, made for them by MGP. So that's essentially why and how MGP is successful. They're helping out a lot of other companies, and at the end of the day, they are getting paid. All right, so MGP, for the longest time, never made their own juice, meaning they never branded it under their own sub-brand, right? So MGP goes back to the 40s, been around for a long time, uh, but they now, in the last few years, just started to actually brand and sell their own bourbon and rise. So the one we're gonna to review today is Remus Repeal 2, Remus Repeal Reserve, right? So there's the front of the bottle and there's the back of the bottle, right? So it's just some facts about this one. So this is the second version. The first version was a lower proof. I think it was like in the 90s. Um, this one comes in right at 100 proof and the MSRP is anywhere from, let's call it 75 to about 80 bucks. So if you find it, it is a little hard to find, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but if you do find it, it should be in that $80 price range, right? No more, no less. Um, again, because it is an MGP made product, at the end of the day, it should be phenomenal, right? They make a lot of other great phenomenal products for other companies. Their own juice should be good as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour this bad boy. So when you think about Remus, so let me give you a little bit of history about um, George Remus, right? So that's the name, the, that's the actual name of the gentleman who they're, um, I guess, naming this bourbon after, right? So there's the back of the bottle. You can see a little bit of, like his picture and his history. So this guy was a character, right? And I mean character, I mean character. George Remus um, was a lawyer and a bootlegger, and he was actually called the king of bootlegging, right? So this guy was pretty smart. So as Prohibition came about, George, George Remus, you know, again, he was a lawyer for a long time, and, but he also defended, obviously, as a lawyer, some individuals who potentially may have been 
criminals. Uh, so what he decided to do was, knowing that prohibition was around and during prohibition, the only way to sell bourbon was through uh, medicinal purposes, right? You truly had to go to a pharmacy to actually, um, and obviously go to a doctor and get a prescription, but then go to a pharmacy to get your bourbon. So what did he do outside of being a lawyer and understanding how the law of bourbon worked at the time with the whole Volstead Act, he was a very smart man. He purchased uh, pharmacies as well as distilleries and not only made the bourbon, sold it in the pharmacy, but then on the side, had his people outside of the pharmacy selling bourbon, let's call it, on the secondary market. So there was a secondary market even back in the 40s. That's pretty damn uh, genius, right? Um, so hey, really cool story. I mean, honestly, George Remus, gosh, I gotta give it to him. And the man made over $40 million in several years, right? Um, so that, that's pretty cool, pretty cool. And I should say, by the way, not the 40s, this was actually back during Prohibition, so like in the 20s. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the, uh, to the, the color here. So beautiful color. All right, very nice. So this is a very dark. So I do know from the front here, this is a blend of 11 and 12 year bourbons and it's a high rye bourbon as well, right? So 11 and 12 year age statement and it's a high rye bourbon, right? Beautiful dark color. Um, so nice little char on this bad boy. All right, let's go to the, uh, to the nose. Mm. Smells great, smells really nice. Should smell good. I mean, MGP, gosh, you have millions of barrels aging. So off the nose, two things stand out. Two things, equally actually. Almost like a burnt um, orange peel and like burnt caramel, just kind of mixed in together, right? A little bit of spice, obviously, because you got that uh, high rye, a little spicy on the nose, not too much ethanol. Mm. Yeah, the orange and the uh, caramel just kind of stand out. A little bit of oak as well, obviously, from the aging process. Mm. It smells really nice, actually. I like that bird kind of crispy smell. Not bad. All right. Well, hey, folks, as we always say, cheers to everyone out there. By the way, I always want to say thank you guys for helping me get over 800 subscribers. I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. Thank you for that. For everyone watching the videos out there like Kay Banks, Cleveland Kid, Halden, my man Halden, I appreciate you. Andre Toms, thank you as well. Ivy, all of you guys and gals as well. I really appreciate you guys. So thank you uh, making great strides and uh, hopefully we'll be bringing and sipping more bourbon for, for many years to come. As I say, enough talking bourbon, George. Cheers. All right, so everything from the nose transfers to the palate. You get that um, that burnt orange, maybe like some cement as well in there actually. Interesting, burnt orange, um, the burnt caramel, the oak, very oak forward first and foremost, um, very caramel forward, not too much like vanilla, um, not a ton of, uh, uh, well, a, not not a ton of vanilla, I should say. Um, mostly, truly, burnt orange and caramel, right? Let me just get a little bit more. I just want to make sure I'm, I didn't miss anything. Okay. Okay. I didn't miss much. The finish is super quick. And I mean super quick. It went down, but it wasn't really, like, memorable. So... You guys know me, I'm an honest judge. I'm gonna give you a straight up honest verdict. The verdict is in. MGP, you failed me. $80, I spent $80 on this. So for me to you, save your $80. There's a lot of other products that MGP produces or companies they produce for that are better than this bad boy. I'm actually quite um, disappointed. Again, for something that is, uh, again, a blend of 11 and 12 year whiskeys or bourbon, whatever. Um, you would think, and at 100 proof, that this would be a phenomenal product. I actually thought it would be, right? But unfortunately, it, it misses the gap. And the reason why, so I'm always gonna tell you the reason why. The reason why the finish, super quick. The palate, while everything did transfer from the nose to the palate, 
it was there, but it wasn't memorable. It just wasn't well-rounded, right? Um, like I sipped it and as soon as I sipped it, it went away. It was like, okay, well, I think I just had bourbon, but it wasn't really good bourbon. It was just, I had bourbon. So for $80, I want something that's memorable, something that's really, really enjoyable and something that I would love to share with my family and my friends. My friends and cousin Anita, let's pass on this bottle. Folks, as always, thank you for watching the video. I appreciate you guys. Have a wonderful uh, rest of your weekend and talk to you soon. See ya.